All right, the last type of CSS positioning is what we call fixed positioning, and we'll quickly look at this one. Fixed positioning is much like absolute positioning. The only difference is that it always uses the browser window for its positioning context. So in this example, we've got, uh, we'll continue off where we left off before. Now I'm gonna take this green div and instead of using relative positioning, I'll move it with fixed. So I'm gonna switch this position to fixed. And I'm gonna say bottom, let's say 100 pixels, and we'll say right 100 pixels, and save and refresh. Now I would expect this div to actually use the entire browser window. So when I say bottom 200, it's gonna move up from the bottom and over from the right. So when I refresh, you can see that in fact, positions itself way over here according to the browser window. Now with absolute positioning, it's always according to the browser. So even though the browser window resizes, you can see that that fixed element is always 100 away from the right edge and 100 away from the bottom edge. Even if the page scrolls up and down, as you can see in this instance, that element will always stay visible. You've probably been on websites to where you scroll up and down and the menu item or something like that, or maybe some advertisements over here on the right, they always stay visible whether you're scrolling up or down, and they may be using fixed positioning to do that very thing. So again, that's how fixed positioning works. The only thing I want to point out here is that fixed positioning also removes itself from the document flow. You'll remember that before this blue div was right here, and as soon as I refreshed, that blue div went up to the very top, because just like absolute positioning, when you use fixed, it's as if the element never existed. So this blue box thinks that it no longer exists because absolute and fixed remove from the document flow where relative does not.